All right, it's Johnny Jet, and we're doing 39 questions. And today, my guest is Robert Rose, who you might know and you should know from his incredible show called Raw Travels, which airs on pretty much every major network here in Los Angeles. It's on um, KCAL, CBS, and Channel 9, so Channel 2 and um, Channel 9. And I've been a fan of Robert's for a while, and I was fortunate to see him at a travel conference a few months ago. And we hooked up, and um, now here we are. Robert. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm impressed. I'm impressed you remember KCBS and KCAL, our affiliates there in uh, Los Angeles. Thank you very much, man. You know, I don't mess around, dude. I, I watch your show. I'm a fan. I really You am. really do. You weren't just saying that. That's fantastic. No, Thank you. I'm not. Thank you. So we're going to do these 39 questions. A lot okay. of it's going to be rapid fire. So, okay. you know, this, this interview is going to be five minutes or 20 minutes. It depends on how fast you answer. So All right, man. let's just jump into it. So, or actually, how are you doing right now in the quarantine? Because right now it's, uh, it's yeah. late April and everyone's still quarantined. Well, you know, so I live in New York City, but I am from Tennessee, and I'm lucky because I was able to get to Tennessee about three weeks ago, and my brother, um, I don't live in San Francisco, I know it looks like I do, that's a virtual <laughs> background, but um, my brother let me stay in his house so I could self-isolate for 14 days, because coming from New York, we were all concerned, I didn't want to bring it down here, yep. and I've been self-isolating since, and because I'm on a farm, and I get fresh air, and my family is around here, it's not as bad, but I really feel for my friends in New York. It was not fun in New York. And like every traveler, I wish I was traveling, man. And I feel, I feel a little trapped because I'm not really used to staying home this long or, you right. know, staying homebound. And, you know, just the idea of traveling is just the fact that, hey, man, if things get too bad, I'll just go to, to Spain or to the Philippines or whatever. What, right. That option has been taken off the table. So that kind of corrals things, gives me a little claustrophobia. But you know, man, I know everybody's feeling that. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky compared to most, and I'm just thankful. And are you getting a lot of work done? I assume you're getting some editing done and things like that? Yeah, man, I'm working hard. We were lucky that we filmed uh, Overshot, I call it, uh, in 2018 and 19, where I shot way more content than I needed. And so that's turned into a blessing because that's probably going to fuel most of my next season eight, which begins next fall. And we're beginning right now. I'm uh, in the midst of Finishing the edit of uh, the first episode, which is called Going Solo, uh, Jakarta, Jakarta, Indonesia. Wow. And um, I went and shot it all by myself. So it's one of those, you know, production value is a little less, but uh, the storytelling hopefully is makes up for it, man. Because I, I love it when I go by myself. I just let things happen and make friends wherever. They, it's so easy to make friends. So easy to make friends when you're by yourself traveling. I, I, I agree. Although it's getting more difficult these days because in the old days, you know, you'd hang out in a hostel and just start talking to everybody. Now in hostels and places, people are always on FaceTime or Skype and they're not really, you know, talking to other people. Yeah. You know, and I missed the whole hostel thing. Now I stayed, I've stayed in hostels before and, but I always got like a private room or something because I'm kind of older. I'm, I'm an older traveler. I'm an older person. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> right? So I'm not in my 20s anymore, man. As a matter of fact, when I was in my 20s, I didn't travel, ironically. I only started travel uh, my early 30s. I began, you know, dipping my toe into travel. So I kind of missed that whole, you know, 20s backpacking thing. And um, I did my first real long-term travel when I was in my early 40s. And, you know, so I'm a late bloomer when it comes to travel. So I'm trying to make up for lost time. And, uh, but I am not above staying at a hostel, man. I'll totally do it. And I'll hang out with a 20 year old. It's a psychographic, man. When I was young, I had an old person's mind. Now that I'm getting older, I feel like I have a young person's mind. Oh, you know, I get energy off young people. I love them. Uh, I'm and, with you. And don't, you know, let me, and don't let me um, mislead you. I never really stayed at a lot of hostels. I think I only stayed at one or two. But, okay. uh, and I was a late bloomer as well. I didn't start traveling internationally until I was, uh, my first international trip was I was 21. Yeah. Actually, 23. Oh, you call that a late bloomer? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is these days. These I mean, days, for sure. Days. I mean, yeah. my son is three, and he's been to, you know, five, six, seven countries. Yeah, man. I mean, well, back in the day, man, when I was growing up, it was like if you had a passport, you were either a, a criminal, worked for the government, or you were sketchy. Like, one <laughs> of those three things. So, that's not the case anymore, thank goodness. And uh, 
Uh, I, I just wish more Americans, more people from the U.S. understood the really, really uh, unique opportunity we have as, as Americans to travel almost anywhere unfettered. Uh, it's a miracle. It really is a golden age of travel, or it was before the pandemic. And right. let's hope it becomes back that way again. I'm with you 100%. So you grew up in Tennessee. Did you say where? Yeah, uh, southern part of Tennessee. It's about an hour and a half part, uh, south of Nashville, very close to Alabama. Uh, which I try not to get to very often. I mean, I, nothing against Alabama, but I'm partial to Tennessee, man. I like the hills. We still have hills, rolling green hills. And I wish I could show you, but I changed my background to the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> and you grew up in, so you grew up in Tennessee, Tennessee. You live in New York City. Where would you go to college? So I went to school at a, a small, oh, it's not that small, Middle Tennessee State University right outside of Nashville. Kind of working class state college uh that uh had a reputation when i went there for partying a lot so that was like my i mean it was the 80s man you know so that was late 80s though late i'm gen x barely i'm with, uh, I'm with you <laughs> and what'd you study uh communications advertising advertising okay. and uh, well, fell into that because i didn't want to take accounting and you only needed one uh introductory accounting class so basically i skated through college um, but uh, never missed a party, and I kept my scholarship. <laughs> I had a scholarship, so. You're a smart man. So, uh, what was your earliest travel memory? My earliest travel memory. Is this part of the 39 questions? These are these are the 39 questions. Oh, we're in it. Oh, you're we're so in it, slick, dude. man. We got into it, and I'm just like, oh, I thought this is the pre-interview. Uh, my bad. Uh, I'll be a little more rapid fire here. That's okay. My earliest travel, <laughs> my earliest travel memory uh, was obvious when I was a kid we would go one of two places. The family vacations in the summer, my dad worked in a factory, he's an electrician, blue collar job. And even though we had a farm, it wasn't the bucolic farm you're thinking of, probably. Uh, so, you know, the farm is like a side gig, but every summer when all me and my brothers and sisters were out of school, we would go somewhere. We'd either go to the Smoky Mountains, which was beautiful, shorter trip, or we would go down to um, usually Destin. Florida, but the Panhandle, where? De I said Destin. Destin, there we go. Destin, Gulf Shores, Daytona Beach. Uh, never made it down to Miami. There was no reason to go that far, you know, because we just go to the northern part and or Disney World, of course, you know. Redneck Riviera, they call it. The, <laughs> still is to this day, I think so. But there's something simple about it. I remember when I moved to New York and they were like, you should do a share at the Hamptons. And I was like, oh, it'll be just like going to Florida Beach. No, no it's <laughs> not. It's boring. I'm like, give me, I'll take the Redneck Riviera any day over there. It's a beautiful place, yeah. Redneck Riviera. I haven't been back since. Can't stand the Hamptons. So how often do you fly, or did you fly before this whole pandemic? Well, so for the business, I fly a lot. I buy, I probably fly five times a month, okay. for, meaning for the uh, business side of things, distribution and ad sales, mostly distribution, where I'm talking to TV stations. So that's domestically, I would fly sometimes four or five times a month. But I'd go on a trip, and that trip might involve five or six flights because that's, right. you know, one hopping from one place to another. Well, For production, if I'm doing, like, a, an international flight, I would probably do six or seven of those a year. Yeah. That's a lot. It is. It is. And, and then sometimes, I, you know, if I'm in Ethiopia, then I'm going to Turkey and then from Turkey back. So I always try to extend my trips uh, a little bit, you know, as well. If I go to uh, – I went to Georgia, Tbilisi, Georgia, and then I went to Ukraine for an extra couple of days. So if you count those, maybe a dozen times, you know? Wow. And do you know how many countries you've been to? Last count was 70-something, and I need to count again. So I, I probably I'm, – I'm getting close to 100. I don't know if I've been there or not. I'm not a huge fan of lists, but I, I do want to see – yeah. Because I, I like going back to places too, you know? I'm with you. How many continents you've been to? Ooh, uh, so I've been to all of them except, uh, of course, uh, Antarctica. Uh, what's the other one? Arctica? Arctic? The no, Arctic? Antarctica. There's seven continents. Antarctica. So you've been to Australia? No, in Australia, no, I have not been to. Okay. Um, so you've been to Africa, missing. obviously. Africa, Asia, Europe, uh, uh, South America, North America. So I've been to five out of the seven. Not Australia, not Antarctica. Not, not too shabby. Um, yeah. What's your favorite American city? Uh, yeah, New York City. I love it. 
Yeah. You live there. Very so. international feel, very, you know, I mean, I love it and I hate it, but it's, it's just, yeah, man. Sometimes you wake up and you don't hear the English language for five or 10 minutes. I love that. It's awesome. Cool. It's the closest thing to travel you can get to is living in New York. I think there are other good cities though as well. LA being one, cause I used to live there. It's a good city. I thought you were going to say San Francisco since that's your backdrop. <laughs> actually i rarely i don't even know anything about i rarely go man it's too expensive i can't spend the night there i'm like in and out do business it is expensive i'm like wow this is more expensive than new york i don't i'm no interest no interest so what's your favorite international city uh well i'd have to go continent by continent on that but you know in latin america it's uh medellin colombia i have a special connection i used to live there and have a lot of friends but in europe i'd say probably i really like madrid um and then uh in asia i really like uh, seoul south korea well okay yeah. and we're the friendliest people in the world that's tough but i'm gonna tell you right now jakarta indonesia is one of they were incredible jakarta indonesia um uh south africa johannesburg south africa Woo! fell in love with those people um and then Asia in general, uh, Lao, Laos, Lao, yeah. I call it Lao. Um, that's the correct way, but yep. we call it Laos. Um, I really love Laos. It, you know, not just friendly, but respectful, hospitable, made you feel good. That's what I like about Asia. They're just so, they take care of you, you know, they may not be touchy feely, let's hug it, people, which they do the cup chai, which they do in Thailand, cup chai. And I'm like, Wow, man, that's going to be the way to do it in the future. And that's, I like it. I love that. Bali, Indonesia, same thing. I agree. I think that is going to take off here, too. I hope. At least I hope. Yeah, namaste. So which place do you have no desire to go to? Uh, I think I have this theory that everywhere is good to go to at least once, even if it's a hellhole. Uh, but then you go somewhere once and you're like, that's good. No need to go back. Um, <laughs> and I would say... And, Please don't take this the wrong way because I did love it. And I met a lot of great people. And I might go back, but I really, I felt like I'm good with Cuba. I've done enough. I've seen enough. Um, I don't like their human rights. I don't like their government. I don't like how they treat their people. It's just, and you know, people call it romantic. I call it, you want to, you know, I call it like, you know, human rights violations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like everybody wants to keep them in a bubble. I'm like, well, they don't want to be in a bubble. They want to be free as well. And they want to have enough to eat and things like that. And so I just don't like Cuba. I don't like, I love Cuban people, but I don't like Cuba. Gotcha. And by the way, I forgot to mention in the beginning, I forgot to ask you how people can find you. Oh. So what, what, what are your social handles or do you have a YouTube yeah. channel? Yeah. So you can go to the website is rawtravel.tv. Uh, but the, the handles are real easy. You can just look for Raw Travel TV, at Raw Travel TV, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You should be able to find it. Yeah, at Raw Travel TV. Be sure to put the TV or you're going to get a travel agency in Australia. Okay, at least it's not a porn site. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought that if you do Raw, you might get something else. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you don't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel, anyone out there, it's right below. And also like this video, but I'll remind you at the end. So, Rob, what are the what are the what are the meanest immigration officers? Uh, and listen, I'm, by I'm the gonna, way, if, if you don't feel comfortable with any of these questions, just say pass. All right, no, I, you no, know. No, it's okay. I'll say um, I would say it's a tie between the United States and China. Okay, they're well. pretty they're pretty intense sometimes. The U.S. can have friendly people. China only have one experience, so it's a it's a bad. Uh, thing to just take one experience but the u.s i've had plenty yep. and uh they've gotten better but they've been uh they're too rude to our visitors and i don't appreciate it um, i don't I like agree, it i, I agree with are, you on that they're nice to me but rude to our visitors that's not yep. cool agreed uh you have a favorite airline uh yeah i mean it's always changing because they seem to always be changing and it's not american and it's not united um let's see jet blue screwed me out of a free trip so it's delta i guess delta by default it's american u.s airline that's a u.s airline uh, international i really like uh asiana air okay going to korea yeah how about you have a favorite aircraft type uh no nah, i think that the bigger the plane the better because you get to spread out more and it just feels more like wow you know i love those 
what were they, 767s or seven, the big ones with the. 747, A380, 777. The one with the 767s are all now being phased out. They're older planes. Yeah, the double, the double deckers though. I yeah. never got to, you know, we go hang out in the bar and the, I, I want to do that. I never got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But the A380 or the 747. Yeah. Uh, and, and they are actually sadly all being phased out, especially now after the pandemic. How about, uh, are you an aisle or window guy? Definitely aisle. Definitely aisle. Yeah. And have you ever sat next to any famous celebrities? Um, I sat next to a hand model from Chicago once and a politician from Tennessee, Lamar Alexander. He picked his nose the entire time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. He's, he's, he's going to love this him. video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have a favorite airport? U.S. airport, international airport. Yeah. So U.S. airport, I would say that's, that's a good one. I like, um, I think Detroit has got a really good airport. I like Detroit's I airport. I hope I got that one right. You're uh, right. I love that airport in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, and then internationally, um, man, Istanbul has a brand new airport that is pretty intense. And uh, just make sure you don't have to catch a connection. It's big. It's really big, but really nice. Really nice. And do you have a favorite airport lounge? Well, usually I'm flying economy, so I don't get to do it. But Asiana Airlines Lounge in Seoul, uh, South Korea, I got the experience and it was uh, beautiful. First class. It was awesome. Yeah, loved it. It's regarded as one of the best. How about uh, do you have a favorite travel credit card? Well, I have the United uh, Miles Scores. one, which, yeah, it kind of sucks because United, um, it's not my favorite airline domestically, but internationally, when I use it, I actually like it. And uh, I could probably do better, but I didn't, I'm too lazy and there's too many points on there. And so there we go. Yeah. Gotcha. How about your favorite hotel? Uh, well, I stayed at the Chateau Frontenac in uh, Frontenac or Frontenac in um, Quebec. It's by far the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in Quebec City and I wasn't paying so that's my favorite hotel because it was nice and I didn't have to pay and I had shampoo with my name on it in my what? room I never even heard of that before shampoo everything had my name on it, it was personalized wow wow I have, I have lived, never seen that that is awesome I could get spoiled yeah uh favorite island oh boy um I would say and I, I won't be able to name the specific island, but there's, we did a, a, a cruise in the Marquesas with the Aranui. Yep. And we stopped off at like six of the inhabited islands. And there were a couple of them that only had like five or 600 people. And they were just remarkable, man. I mean, they're so isolated, but such nice people in the, the lush greenery and you're out in the middle of the Pacific. I've never been more relaxed in my life. So it probably put a couple of years on my life and then the pandemic trauma that I just went through took a couple of years off. But hey, I'm still <laughs> glad to be alive. I'm breaking even. <laughs> How about favorite beach? Um, wow, that's a good one too. I mean, again, I've had some really good beaches, but there's one in Guadalupe that I went to and I forgot the name of it, but it was just beautiful. And it's on the, uh, the main island of Guadalupe. It's in the Caribbean. It's a French, if you don't know Guadalupe, it's a French Caribbean island. And they have a lot of really nice beaches. And one in particular, I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. That's all right. we, we, can, we can all, you know, I'm going to create a blog post out of these answers. And you can always, I'll email you and you can just. Uh, yeah, I can look it up. I can yeah. look it up. Okay. So we'll, I'll, I'll make sure you check out the blog post on johnnyjet.com after this. How about your favorite restaurant? You can do fancy restaurant and hole in the wall. Hole in the wall. Okay, so, you know, because I don't remember all these awesome restaurants that I go to all over the world, I'm going to yep. pick my one in New York. It's called Indochine, and it's in uh, the East Village, close to where I used to live a long time ago when I first moved there. And it's been around forever. It's kind of a fancy schmancy celebrity hangout, but it doesn't have that vibe. It's got the coolest laid-back vibe, and it's French-Vietnamese. Check it out. Indochine's been around for a while. It's a legend. Great restaurant. Hole in I the think wall. I've been there once a long time ago. Oh man, yeah. It's, everybody's like, "Really? Are they still around?" I'm like, "They're still around for a reason because they're good." good. Um, nice. Hole in the wall, man. I'm just gonna say like a taco truck in in L.A. Uh, or a sushi spot. I can't name the names because I don't remember when I lived there. But those I loved. You can go to a hole in the wall sushi and have good sushi in in L.A. And you can't do that in New York. You, you're taking your life in your own hands. But well, in, in New York, in L.A. You can get some really good sushi, and uh, every taco truck is good. Yeah, interesting. How about uh, favorite food? 
Uh, I would say Asian, man. I'm definitely, you know, more along the healthy uh, Asian side. So Vietnamese, Thai. Uh, I'm ve- mostly vegetarian these days, but I will definitely eat some sushi and some uh, pet. So I guess I'm pescatarian. So sushi. Let's say sushi. How about fruit? Favorite fruit? Oh, uh, wow. I would say mango or pineapple if it's fresh, like from Latin America, like fr- straight off the tree. Mango I thought you were going to say mangosteen, which is my favorite fruit. Oh, really? Mangosteen. I don't know if I've ever had that one. Oh, and it, you usually like, get Southeast Asia. They're the best. Really? Next time you May go. Had it, it, is it like an orange? No, it's like, it's like a purple thing. You cut it. It's hard to cut. Once you cut it, there's like five little slivers in there and you eat it. They have, they have nuts on it. Like they have a nut. You don't want to eat the pit or whatever. Oh, okay. But it's like between like a rambutan, which I also love. And I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but I mean... And once in a while, you can find them in the stores here. They're usually expensive, yeah. but uh, yeah, once in a while, you can find them. Yeah, Very once yeah. In a while. that's a strange fruit, man. What's the craziest thing you've right. ever eaten? Oh, uh, by far, um, a seven-course meal of a cobra, which included, uh, this is in Vietnam, the cobra heart, the cobra urine, and the cobra blood as a shot. That was that was wild. And that was way before pre-pandemic. So don't give me hate. I'm sorry, guys. You know, it was good TV. And would I do it again? Probably not. But, you know, I did it. And, um, How you know, taste? sometimes you got to do things. And, you know, I think they cut it with vodka. It was like 11 in the morning and we were in Vietnam and I was jet lagged. And I was just worried about, you know, this is going to kill me. Right. But actually, it was really good. It was really well, good. They, so the Cobra's alive. You pick them out. They kill him. They drain the blood. They drain the urine. They cut out the heart and they serve it to you. And it's, it's Vietnam. I mean, it's wild. And Dude. again, if I wasn't producing the show, I wouldn't have done it. And I probably wouldn't do it again. Yeah. I really don't like doing bizarre foods, especially after this whole pandemic. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I, feel, I have to think about these from now on, you know, but back then it was the right thing. It was the thing to do. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be into that one, but. I just don't want to get any hate. Yeah. I don't want to get any hate. Like, yeah. ah, you're so irresponsible. That was a long time ago, man. Yeah. All right, favorite drink of choice, uh, or drink of choice in the air or on the ground, or both? Uh, I would say a good uh, Argentine red wine. Yeah, that would probably be my favorite drink of choice. Yeah. How about in the air? Do you, what do you drink while you're flying? Uh, well, it depends, you know, what they're offering. But if, they're, if I'm uh, fortunate enough to be flying first class, which means I didn't pay, um, then I will – you know, take the complimentary red wine is great. I uh, love red wine. Or um, if I'm not flying first class, I'm flying like Southwest domestic. I'll use one of my handy dandy drink coupons and get a fat tire, you know, beer. <laughs> I got beer. you. I'm, a, I'm not a, I'm a lightweight. I don't drink a lot, but I, I don't, one or two I, beers, one or two glasses. I just drink water on the plane is what I drink. Oh, that's what you're supposed to do. But, that's yeah. all I drink. Uh, uh, favorite travel movie. Uh, well, Ooh, I have a lot, but I think the Siberian Express with uh, Woody Harrelson inspired me to take that trip on a Siberian Express train. I haven't done it yet, but I really like that movie, The Siberian Express by Woody, you know, Woody Harrelson. And how about your favorite travel TV show? And by the way, if my microphone sounds better, I just realized it was not plugged in like a fool. So <laughs> I don't know how, how the sound quality has gone. Has it gone better or worse? But it's got, Yeah, it's gotten uh, different, different. Yeah, yeah, but better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it wasn't bad before. I didn't notice. Okay, um, yeah. You probably sound like me because I'm doing iPhone, a uh, microphone. Um, favorite travel TV show? Um, obviously not raw travel because that's mine. I would say, um, oh man, there's one on uh, PBS. It's the granddaddy of all travel shows. Um, Globe Trekker. Globe Trekker. Thank you. And 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 um, and no reservations back in its heyday. Those were my two. Peter Bourdain. Go to yeah yeah, but I I have a special affinity for Globe Trekker because it was a little more, a little less cult of celebrity, a little right. more realistic, and that's kind of what I wanted for raw travel. I don't want to be a celebrity. I want the travel to be front and center, right. and Globe Trekker feels like that, and they're very about making connections and yeah, and I like that. I like Jordan, by the way. No, I never got the pleasure, man. No, I never got to meet him, man. I wish I had it. Wish I had it. Wish he's still around, so I could meet him. You know. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, how did you with that? Did you get to meet him? I, yeah, actually, I, I was fortunate to meet him once at the Cayman Cookout in the Cayman Islands a few years ago, and 
you know, it's a, it's a really relaxing place where all these famous chefs come and they're just hanging out and it's so exclusive that you just get to spend time with them. And he wow. was with his family and, you know, we talked a while. He was a real nice guy. Very nice guy. Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. You never know. You know, sometimes they say you don't want to meet your idols, you know, right. but. And I met a few that have not been cool, but he. he oh, was, me too. He, me he too. was cool. Good. Although I don't think he would have liked me as a traveler because I'm not as raw as you are. <laughs> <laughs> and things are but anyway how about you have a favorite travel book oh man i, I read travel books like crazy uh, i just read one i mean i it's hard for me to say my favorite well yeah i do let me back that up um it's called the unsmiling ladies a border patrol and it's by a uh a musician um, I cannot remember his name because I have the memory of a gnat, but I've met him. He's a good guy, he, and he's a lead singer for The Hold Steady. So you don't have to Google it. It's an amazing travel book. As far as I'm concerned, never got the press that it needed. It only came out a few years ago, but um, check it out. Uh, the Unsmiling Ladies of Border Patrol, and that's about his travels through Eastern uh, Europe um, while touring as an independent, almost punk musician by himself couch surfing and whatnot but he's, he's got a way with words he's a very talented guy cool i will put a link to it in this blog post good good yeah. uh do you have a favorite travel app uh yes i mean i'm kind of i guess old school so i use kayak <laughs> hotwire uh so they're not like favorites i just kind of got used to using them gotcha. and i do use TripAdvisor a lot for my research and i mm -hmm. also have a profile on TripAdvisor. i'm one of the whatever's influence i don't know what they call it but um i was one of the early people that they invited to create content for them so i have a lot of content up there so i'm on know, there I too like are you that yeah. figure of course yeah although i haven't been on lately so i should go check it out me either me either well i think it kind of died out to be honest so we're waiting for Maybe it to come back but, yeah um what do you seem to always forget when you travel if anything uh, yeah i would say um you know, like just something simple, like a, um, like a charging cord for my phone. Just That's me. Just try to remember every time, and for so because it's always charging my phone till the last minute, and then you just forget. Luckily, you know you can buy those pretty almost anywhere, so I haven't really forgotten anything about it. Because remember, I'm I'm packing with camera gear and stuff, so that's like my focus, and so I'll end up like forgetting toothpaste, something stupid, and then. In Ethiopia, where you're like nowhere near a store, you know, rural Ethiopia. So I, me and my ca my cameraman, every time I wanted to brush my teeth, I'd go knock on his door, he would squeeze out a little bit. I gets old after like five days. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I guess, I guess you're not gonna forget toothpaste next time. Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't count on it. All right, we got a few questions left. So, what is your favorite? What's your actually? What's your worst travel moment? Oh, I would say getting robbed in Argentina by a fake taxi driver as he was driving away with all my, with six weeks. I mean, with like, yeah, about three weeks worth of footage, my camera gear, my laptop, all my valuables. And uh, it was before I started producing raw travel, but it, it was a very sink in the middle of a pouring rainstorm and realizing I had just gotten flim flammed and had read about this scam in the dangers and annoyances section of lonely planet and fell for it anyway uh just what did you, you get a taxi and then you put your stuff in the back tr trunk that got in yeah. and then when you went to go get it yes yeah, so i wasn't supposed to i was going to take a regular taxi that you call for but there was a horrible thunderstorm and i had to catch a boat to uruguay that day so i'm out there trying to flag one this guy sees me says hey i have a private taxi yeah. and he, you know it's just some guy in a car and uh, looking for a guy like me and we haggled about the price and I felt bad because I had beat him down a little bit. So I was like, you know, I'm going to leave my valuables here while I go get my clothes. And so I just left, I put my valuable bag in the truck car first and I went to get my clothes and I turned around and he was gone. And, you know, I learned a don't overpack. Okay. That was the early days of traveling and I overpacked and B don't ever let go of your valuables. Keep them with you at all times. I've never been robbed since. So I learned a valuable lesson. That's a good one. How about what's yeah. your best travel moment? I, I can honestly say I've had so many uh, that, you know, I can remember at the end of the day, 
just saying that was this was a special day. The most memorable one, whether it was the best or not, was in the in the southern part of Ethiopia, hanging with the Mercy tribe. Very difficult to get to. Very remote. Um, just the culture shock was astounding. And for some reason, that just amazes me. And I was just like, this is insane. I mean, I'm hanging out with guys with machine guns, but they're smiling. I'm hanging out with ladies who are naked except for a loincloth and they're, you know, doing the stone on the corn and, and, you know, they live in thatched huts. It was like going back 500 years ago, man. And I'm not trying to romanticize it. I have no, that's how they live. And that was an astounding experience. Very difficult to shoot and to film and to edit because you had to blur all the nudity. But, um, Man, that was just, I mean, that's a once in a lifetime thing. I, I don't want to do it again. I'm happy I did it. though. And were they fine with you filming them, by the way? Yeah, we had to get the permission. And that's why it was difficult to film because they didn't want us to pull out the steady cam. So my cameraman was, you know, they, they said the steady cam would be more money. We had to pay. We had to pay. You got to pay, you know, something to the tribe. But were they fine so we, with like, you know, filming them while they were basically naked? Oh, yeah. Once you, oh, yeah. Well, first of all, Nate, nudity for them was like no big deal, you know? Um, and I actually, after a day, I got used to it. I was like, oh, there's a stark naked guy walking his cows on the road. You just, that's just the way they roll. And a big smile on his face with a machine gun on his shoulder, you know? And um, it was, it was just wild, man. And I, I live for those moments. They're, Did they they're, make I've you take a, your clothes off too? No, 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 they don't want to. <laughs> no, they know. They've seen a few Westerners. They know. <laughs> All right. How about what's your most embarrassing travel moment? Oh, wow. Uh, I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm picking recent memories because I've had so many, but I would say Istanbul, Turkey. Um, I was unable to find my Airbnb and I was lost walking around this neighborhood. Um, and that's coming up on a show and it was a mostly Muslim neighborhood. And I just felt intimidated and threatened and I felt like a fish out of water because no one could tell me where it was. And anyway, long story short, I finally found my Airbnb and I spent like three days there and I went back to thank the guy at the store who had actually finally directed me and everybody was so sweet. And so I realized at that moment that I had been looking at them both with stereotype stereotypes and also reflecting my own experience, which was stress. I had been dropped off in the middle of nowhere by my taxi driver who just, kicked me out of his taxi and was like, I don't know where it is, find it. And I had, and we didn't speak the language, we argued. And I was just having a bad day, I was jet lagged. And I judged those people through that lens. And then when I went back after sleep and calmed down and no longer felt threatened, I saw that they were the most beautiful people on the planet. They were just gorgeous, friendly, just raising their families, you know? And I felt really embarrassed that a traveler like me who had been so many places could fall into that old trap. You know, I thought I was above that. So I'm not, and no one is, I don't think, you know, but I learned my lesson. I put it on the show and I'm just being honest about it. Well know? said, well said. Yeah. Two more questions. It's not going to be five minutes, right? I'm not going to be the shortest interview ever. You won't be the <laughs> longest either. So, okay, good. Okay. Good. Well, you haven't What's heard my dream? last answer. <laughs> What's that? You haven't heard my last answer yet. It's That's true. One. We got two. <laughs> What's your dream destination? Um, I just, Dying to get to Central Asia, Kazakhstan, uh, take the Siberian Express, like we discussed, and it just hit Central Asia as, you know, get off the grid as much as possible, that part of the world. Yeah. Okay. And what is your best travel tip? Whew. Oh, my God. I have so many of those, too. But uh, my best travel tip would probably be, hold on, I'm getting a call. Let me decline. It's my brother. <laughs> was more still there. All right. Um, He's probably wondering what happened to me. He hasn't seen me all day. I thought um, I was interviewing someone else for a second. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Give me time to, uh, I would say my best travel tip is, um, God, I just had a really good one. Uh, oh, here's, it's not my best, but let's say you're in a foreign country. Obviously <laughs> you're in another country. You don't speak the language. Like the street signs are really a mystery to you, but you got to get around by taxi take a photo of your apartment, of the street signs, of your surroundings, so you can show it to the taxi driver when you're trying to get home. And so wherever you're going, Google it, snapshot it, put it on your phone, take it, show it to them, it comes in handy. Once you show them that, they kind of get it. And then just make sure you got plenty of juice on your phone though. You don't want to run out of uh, power and then not be able to get back home. So that's sure. 
a, a lot of hotels like you know i'd stay at hotels in asia or thailand yeah. especially and they would have a card that has it one side in english and the other side in thai and right. you have to have that to get back to your hotel for the thai that's part. right otherwise you they're just, not gonna be able to figure it out so that's a great right tip. yeah um, anyway, thank you so much, Robert, for uh, joining me today, doing these 39 yeah. questions. I hope you guys uh, follow him on social, subscribe to his YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like this interview, make sure you like it because it helps with the algorithms. And um, until next time, have a great one. Thank you, guys.